as the US begins the process of pulling out of the uh, Paris Climate Accord. The leaders of China and France have signed a pact pledging to stay in. Somewhat strange that you have to sign a pact to sign a pact to stay in an agreement that you've already in, but there you go. The deal includes 195 countries, a common goal of keeping global warming below one and a half degrees Celsius. President Trump says it puts unfair burdens on American businesses. At the same time, 11,000 scientists around the world warn the climate crisis is accelerating faster than expected. Factors like the loss of tree cover, more meat production, and a rise in air travel to show the world is unequivocally in a climate emergency. Our next, our next guest, Bill Ware, probably wouldn't disagree. CNN's chief climate a correspondent. Well, good to see you, Bill. Good to see you as a request, so, yes. Uh, on this question, first of all, of, of Paris, how realistic is it for some states and to maintain the limits of Paris if the country itself is out? Uh, Michael Bloomberg, former New York mayor, Jerry Brown, former California governor, have tried that question. And they say they have about 65% of the American population trying to meet the Paris targets, 70% or so of the U.S. economy. Uh, but it's a good question. If, if the biggest, most powerful country in the history of humanity isn't engaged in what is essentially World War C for climate, what mean, where would it go from there? Well, 11,000 scientists claiming that all these things, less tree cover, but particularly air travel, yeah. showing that, uh, that, that that's worsening the situation. But you and I know that air travel is just 2% of, uh, of uh, our carbon emissions. Now, obviously, as an airline correspondent, I might take a different view of it than you do as a climate I think about it every time I, I get on board, absolutely, to think about what the, the, the unintended consequences of the choices we make. I think it's less about specifically air travel. It's more that the top 10% uh, of the earners in this planet uh, burn half of the carbon. And then the bottom 50% is responsible for about 10%. So if you're looking to trim that in some way, um, you know, average American burns about 17 metric tons of carbon a year. A flight from Paris to L.A. is about a, a ton and a half. And so you can do the math there, uh, but may maybe you don't have a car. Maybe you use, maybe you can offset that somehow. Do you uh, like offsetting schemes? You know, every offsetting scheme I've seen has always left me wondering, not if it's a, a, a crime, but there's something scamish about it. I think it's, it's, it is a road to hell paved with good intentions. And yes. people are still figuring it out. I was just uh, at, a, at a conference on Al Gore's farm in Tennessee, which he is triple offsetting uh, the carbon footprint of everybody who came to this as well. And it certainly, as some have called it, it's like buying indulgences from the Catholic Church in, in, in some ways. Uh, but those who support it say this is where we have to move it. We have to move markets. There are some, you know, as you speak of air travel, uh, Imperial College out of London did a study, and one of their radical recommendations was we should do away with air loyalty mileage programs, which incentivize people to take extra flights just to keep their status. Instead, maybe airlines can incentivize um, more Earth-friendly uh, point system in some way. So, yeah, I, I think this is... Humanity is making this up as they go along, but as those 11,000 scientists are coming out, every month there's one that's more alarming than the one before. The technology gets better, the satellites get better, we understand more, and as a result, economists are saying we are grossly under-predicting how much this is going to hurt, how much this is going to cost. Right, so, when? When, I mean, I, I suppose that you would say, those, uh, our, cars, our colleagues in the meteorological department would say, and the weather centre would say, we're already seeing the evidence. I think it's what, long before the waves are lapping on Miami Beach, it's insurance companies that are not going to underwrite certain zip codes, right. which craters property values and tax bases. They're seeing it in the hills of California where insurance premiums are going up. So this will create economic dust bowls long before, uh, you know, it's the day after tomorrow apocalyptic Will it be the movies. economics that finally drives this argument for, for, for ordinary people when they suddenly think... Because it's seemingly we are lemming-like determined to go over the edge. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's... And... and, and your Churchill said, right, Americans will do the right thing when they've tried everything else. And once they see that, wait a minute, budgets are shrinking for first responders as fires are, are quadrupling, uh, we have to do something about this.